Good evening. It is Friday, May the 27th, almost 10 o'clock p.m. This is Shea Gibson with Weather Flow and Wind Alert, bringing you a tropics update. So we're watching Tropical Depression number 2. It was given an upgrade from the National Hurricane Center a little after 4 o'clock p.m. today and issued a tropical storm warning for the South Carolina coast as of 5 o'clock p.m. So Tropical Depression number 2 out here in the Atlantic heading towards the South Carolina coast. It looks like it's going to make a run for the middle South Carolina area, specifically around the Charleston area. The uh, current sustained winds are 35 miles an hour. The pressure is down to 1,009 millibars. The general direction is west-northwest at about 11 knots. So it doesn't look like this track is going to change over the next day or two as it makes a run for South Carolina. Let's take a quick peek at the warnings in the cone of uncertainty. And it looks like they're going to also probably have the name Bonnie tonight, if not by tomorrow morning. So by the time we wake up tomorrow, we may have Bonnie already um, formed and heading towards our coastline. So here's the general track as it heads towards South Carolina. Now the, the berth of this is still a little bit wide. It could drift to the south. There's a couple of models that are still bringing the storm to the south of Charleston. And then there are also uh, some that bring it just a little bit to the north. But I think we're going to be feeling a lot of these impacts directly from this system no matter what happens. So rain is actually a higher threat than it was before because the storm is actually keeping an upper level trough with it as it drifts into the coastline, which means uh, it's going to have some upper level uh, moisture fed down into it. The upper trough may also keep some shear on the system to keep it a little bit on the weaker side. So we've, we've always been in kind of the opinion with this system that it would stay on the weaker end, and this is further evidence that it may do that, uh, do exactly that. So let's take a quick peek at the wind speed probabilities for the next five days. It looks like uh, the wind speed probabilities for our area uh, keep it very low for tropical storm force winds. We're about 40% for Charleston, 30% inland as we go in time. So that doesn't mean we won't see tropical storm force winds. We probably just won't see them sustained along the coastline. If we look at the 50 knot wind speed probability, we're very, very low at 5 to 10%. Uh, barely a sliver of 10% over the Charleston area over the next five days. So it doesn't look like we're going to have anything sustained that strong. We may get some bursts here and there from some of these squall lines and banding that make it in a, along the coastline. And those tend to bring the winds up briefly ahead of them. So if we look at the Charleston Weather Service uh, with their tropical storm warning for the Charleston area and all offshore zones and even inland to Beaufort, uh, Berkeley County, into Monk's Corner, uh, some of these areas will be affected with tropical storm conditions based on some of these squall lines and bands that move into the area. Here is the wind speeds from 6 p.m. tomorrow night through uh, 6 a.m. Sunday showing a swath of winds, uh, probability of 40 mile an hour winds plus being able to push into the Charleston area and to the south. And that is in part mainly in due to some of that banding pushing on shore with some squall lines. And those squall lines during tropical systems tend to pack a punch because they're convective lines of activity that really bring the winds up nearby. So there, there could be a couple of brief periods of these as the time goes on. This is specifically, specifically for tomorrow night. It doesn't mean that we won't start seeing some of these rains and bands move in tomorrow afternoon. I think we'll, we'll probably start to see conditions deteriorate as we go through the day tomorrow, by even by midday. Some of the clouding is starting to move on shore now. If we take a look at the... Uh, visible satellite we're moving out of the high resolution to the infrared at nighttime so it looks very disorganized right now but the main central area of low pressure is right here and this is moving to the west northwest at 11 knots so some of the clouding earlier I was seeing when I was actually on the beach I could see it from a distance some of this mid-level troughing associated out ahead of some cumulus build along the edge of the Gulf Stream is pushing into the coastline now so we're already seeing some outflow and some of these some banding pre prefrontal banding from the storm making it in along the coastline the upper trough is still coming down and up and around you can see some of this feeding up from the south and this is actually keeping shear over the system right now so it's it's not allowing it to develop where it might be the other day or just yesterday we were talking about this area moving to more favorable environment however this trough is wrapping around it. You can see it sort of bending down over Cuba and wrapping up around it. So it looks like that's going to stay with it at least just to the east. And it may, I don't think it's going to decouple with this trough. And in fact, the heavier rains may stay still uh, remain to our north. But I, I still think that we are in the window 
to get a lot of rain as well in the Charleston area because of this trough wrapping some of this upper moisture down over this system to allow for more convective feed along the coastline, especially when it gets to the warmer Gulf Stream waters, we'll see a blow up of thunderstorms. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the rainfall totals over the next 24 hours. We start to see some of that rain pushing on shore. It looks like a very light amount, maybe up to a half an inch. Uh, I think this has 0.79 at the highest, maybe 0.5 along the coastline. So this is the next 24 hours. This is more of this is going to be happening tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow night. If we look at the next five-day outlook, the rain swath, you can see how it moves up to the North Atmospheric River around this system. Looks like it's going to push up into this area and, and bring more rainfall up into that direction. But it does keep some of the higher rainfall centered here, and that could be based on the GFS model, keeping the low wrapped down in the coastline. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Let's take a look at the sea surface temperatures. The warmer Gulf Stream right down the middle, about 82 to 86 degrees. The cooler shelf waters are just a few degrees cooler, not very much. I want to take a look at the water table. And right now, our temperatures have actually come up along the coast in the last day or so with some warmer air temperatures. Charleston is sitting at 77.7 .7 degrees. So uh, the ideal temperature for convective development for tro in, in tropical systems is about 82.4 degrees or 28 degrees Celsius. So we're getting kind of close to that. It doesn't mean that... Uh, you know, it doesn't mean that it would be limiting the storm's potential strength. It just won't be adding to it very much. If the, the waters were significantly cooler, it might actually hamper development for the system. But it looks like it may be able to help maintain uh, that status of a tropical storm, at least until it makes a uh, connection with the land. And then maybe some of the cooler shelf waters to the north funneling down. And let's take a quick look at the Wilmington temperatures and they're still a little bit cooler at 75.4 degrees so that that'll be a big factor these cooler shelf waters just to the west of the Gulf Stream all right let's take a look at the track guidance and we can see the the wider berth that was earlier from Cape Fear down to Savannah we still have a chance down here but it looks like pretty much this area right down the middle of these tracks is going to be for Charleston and if we look at the intensity models Looks like for the immediate future that some of these models do bring it up. In fact, this one right here, the ship model, is one that a lot of uh, a lot of institutions watch for uh, development. But we could acquire that name Bonnie tonight, if not by the time we wake up tomorrow morning. Don't be surprised if we see Tropical Storm Bonnie. I say Tropical Storm because of the warmer core elements that will be wrapping into the center of this closed low pressure or this depression uh, that we have right now. So. It's not, it looks like it's not going to carry on cooler temperatures into the core, so I'm betting for tropical storm body versus subtropical storm body at this point. If we look at the numerical guidance, here's the Euro model, and it brings this low. Oops, let me uh, run this again. It brings the low into the area and then shoots it out back to the west and then off to the northeast. I'm sorry, back to the east and then off to the northeast. And if we look at the tracks, this is why some of these tracks have this very sharp angle because it's betting on the Bermuda high pressure out here to the east to guide it and then bring it back out to sea. So that's what the Bermuda high pressure is out is is um, going to be for a steering pattern. Now the GFS has something a little bit different. And if we go there, I want to back this out and actually go back to zero hours. And let's run the GFS through. And you can see how it brings this and all of its rain into the coastline as a low pressure. If it's Bonnie, then we can just assume that this low is, is Bonnie. But you can watch as it just sort of hangs down along the coastline and doesn't really go anywhere. And a lot of that has to do with an Appalachian Ridge building to the north to suppress it with those north northeasterly winds uh, from the north coming down over it. So uh, even with Bermuda high pressure out here trying to give some steering current up in this direction, this low looks to get caught up between the two. And th that's what the solution for GFS is, is to hold this low along the coast. If that happens, we could be looking at even more rain potential. Uh, most of the model guidance does bring this storm on out and around the Bermuda high in time. So we'll have to see. I think that's the general guidance right now is, to, is that this system will lift it out of the area. But we can't exclude that possibility of it hanging around uh, our spot for a couple of days, which that would be kind of a worst case solution. I mean, worst case scenario for rains in that manner. So let's take a look at the details. Oops, let me go back to Charleston. And I want to zoom in and see what 
the Charleston readings are. Now we can see the gradient is starting to increase along the coastline. We have 16 to 20 miles an hour pretty much up and down the coastline. Folly Beach is uh, Winyah Bay here at 16 miles an hour. If we zoom into the Charleston area, we can see Folly Beach at 19 to 21 miles an hour. And there's been, there was a little bit of a gust around 7.30 p.m. where the gradient tightened down. Even that happened at Isle of Palms where we saw a little bit of a surge right there at the nocturnal surge at 7.30 p.m where we had this easterly wind so uh, pretty much an easterly wind all day long and it was about about 12 to 14 knots all afternoon until late this evening or, or sometime uh, early to late evening when the winds actually picked up a little bit so uh, that is sort of the gist for right now for the South Carolina coastline if we look at the details and look at what the forecast models are showing for the next uh, couple of days here it gets very tricky with these tropical systems and these these models will be very shifty and they will change quite a bit so don't believe everything that you see here as we go into tomorrow for saturday we see a little bit of disagreement on what's going to happen uh, i tend to watch the gfs which is this sort of uh, not this lime green the nam 5k but the one above it the the different shade of green and the wave watch model 3 which is this one right here so these two usually run in tandem they're they're kind of similar in fashion but it looks like uh, that one actually keeps the winds east-northeast, and the GFS keeps it a little bit on the northeast side. So we may see northeast winds increase tomorrow up to about the 15 to 20 mile an hour ranges as the gradient expands ahead of the system. Now, the other solution is that the winds become more northerly, and in, in, uh, according to the NAM 5 kilometer, the winds become more northerly in nature, uh, and then they go throughout the day. So it looks like some, most of these models are in agreement right around 1 to 2 o'clock p.m. when they start to, to do the north-northeast general track and then they start to kind of bend back so these these directions are going to shift quite a bit uh, as they usually do especially when you get these convective bands starting to move on shore later in the daytime these directions become very shifty so uh, just watch the local sensors and know what's going on with the winds if you're into wind and water sports and it's not in a storming situation uh, make sure you know what is offshore and what is onshore so our primary threat for the charleston area is going to be rip currents and I want to take another look at this right here from National Hurricane Center so our immediate threat for tomorrow and into Sunday is going to be rip currents that's going to be priority number one uh, there's going to be some growing swell on the coastline probably from the east southeast at about three to five feet if not four to six feet with a period of about seven to ten seconds so the waves are going to be on the build but with onshore flow those that could be there could be a lot of chop and heavy rip currents going on along the coastline number two is going to be the rain as the rains build into the area looks like the swathing is going to probably get about two to four inches between saturday and monday and that's just sort of a wild guess for right now i mean we could get more we could get less depending on how the system uh, lines up for everything so that's going to do it for the tropics update for tonight and I will try to get back on tomorrow for a new update. If we have Bonnie, by the time we wake up, I will uh, let you know. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.